Hello Australia, Mitch is away, I'm in charge and the circus has come to town. And well on tonight's show, we're talking about workplace harassment, can it be stopped? Then the Indonesian execution, is humanity at an end? And thirdly, hypochondriacs that are always sick, how do you stop them from being sick? That's all coming up on a very exciting show in 10 seconds time. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Sweet and Sour. Mitch is away and I'm in charge. And, well, let's meet our exciting band of guests tonight. Hello, Clinton. Welcome back. Good, mate. Thank you for having me back. Oh, wonderful. And how's the MC going? MC going very, very well. Got a few very exciting things coming up. Fantastic. And soon. we'll hear about that later on I in will, the show. I will. And, Stacey, what about yourself? Welcome back. A gushing, wonderful thank you. female. And how's the real estate going? It's going very well, thank you. Oh, wonderful. The real estate, even though there's a bit of a downturn in the market at the moment, well, it's still going do, strong. Well, I do the rentals, and the rentals have been quite busy. We did have a little bit of a, a, a quiet spell, but I think things are picking up now, which is really good. Wonderful, fantastic. And uh, every great house needs a great artist, and we've got one here. Welcome back, Alex. Hello, yep, I'm back. And how's the art going? Um, I've got a couple of projects coming up. Someone wants me to do a nice painting for them, and I'm going to start another one of a pet portrait to enter in a competition. Oh, wonderful. Specialist yep. in painting pets. Not really, but, you know, everyone's got pets these days, so they love their animals just like they love their... Humans. Fantastic. If you need your pet painted, get hold, get in touch with Alex. And Steve, welcome back. How's community television going? Thank you for having me, John. Community television is really happening at the moment, which is good. We're a little bit worried with the government might kick us off there at the end of the year, but we're hoping that's not going to happen. So yes, let's keep our hopes up. And uh, yep. talking about hopes, uh, this next, uh, our first letter has hopes that we can solve her problems. Moving right along to letter one, Bully Boys. Dear Sweet and Sour, I'm the sole female in an all-male office. Most of the time we get along pretty well. I tolerate their loutish behaviour and they tolerate me. That was until we got a new boss. This guy hasn't got a clue. He's a bit older than the rest of us and tries to act cool by making sexist jokes and flirting with me. Unfortunately, this is now filtered through to the other guys and they no longer treat me with the same respect. I'm not sure whether I'm being overtly sensitive to this new abrasive boss, but I figure that joking and teasing has become bullying. I love my job and I used to have a good rapport with my workmates. How can I get things to return to the way they were? And what should I say to my boss and the boys? My new boss is also the only one who knows I'm an exotic dancer and he always discreetly comments on it, which makes me uncomfortable. Kelly from Telemarine, Victoria. Clinton, what do you say to Kelly? Well, Kelly, look, I don't want to um, play down the effects of bullying in the workplace and sexual harassment and things like that, but unfortunately, the situation possibly just need to roll with that a little bit more. I mean, you said early on that it was um, all good until the new guy came, so if it's only this new boss that's causing you a bit of grief, maybe just have a polite word to him and say, look, you're taking it a bit, a bit further than the other lads. I don't really appreciate the sexist comments that you're making. Um, it is hard in an all-boy workplace if you're the only girl, but it'd be the same if you were the only boy in an all-girl workplace. I mean, you'd have to listen to girl things, like you may have to listen to boy things a little bit more. So, I mean, the Aussie sense of humour as well is a very fine line. Very fine line, I think, between sexism and bullying. What about it, Stacey? Well, I also think that Kelly's going to have to roll with it like Clinton said. I used to be the only girl in a mainly male dominated office years ago and you just have to kind of roll with it, you know, join in a bit as well but with the new boss being the only one really being aware that she's also an exotic dancer, perhaps have a, have a word with him and, you know, maybe just say to him that you'd rather he didn't make those kind of remarks but you're going to have to be very delicate about it because you don't want him to take offence then and then Take, you know, be sort of against her in the workplace, but just roll with it. And if someone says something, just maybe just say back to them in a nice, you know, in a nice way. Oh, don't, you know, I don't really appreciate you saying that. Come on, that's not very nice. Or just say something back to them that they may not like, and then they'll kind of get that they're, they're not meant to say that. Okay, I can, I can hear oh. Alex. Alex panning away here. She's ready to go. You two. Why not? 
to smack both of you. Right. No, listen, Kelly, you are not being overly sensitive about this. This is called bullying. You're a woman working with a bunch of bullies. I worked with a bunch of men in a car yard and I got bullied. I got made comments made to me, sexual comments, and it's not nice. And I'll tell you what you do. What you do, you take a note of every time, every day they make a comment to you, you write it down on your diary. Monday, blah, 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 said this. Tuesday, blah, 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 said this. The boss put me in the corner and he talked about my... He has no right to bring up your, pa your past dancing because that's none of his business. And if he's talking to you like that, it's disrespectful. You're in a workplace and he should respect you for your workplace and then you can take it to um, the discrimination board and, and tell him that too. And that way it should nip it in the bud. It's not called for. It makes me really angry. Yes. Now, Steve, do that, would... never get job. doesn't yeah. matter. You don't let someone walk all over you. You don't let men dictate to you. No, 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 no. no. Well, but let's see what Steve has to say. Laying down the law, do you You're agree with done, Alex? Well done, Alex. <laughs> Alex is tough, and I love it. These guys <laughs> are immature. <clears throat> I've had a little bit of bullying in workplaces. We all get it. We all suffer it. But what Alex has just said is spot on. These guys, they need to really look at themselves. But for you. You need to entrust in a friend. As Alex said, write it down, everything, the times, who said it and what. And you know what? Maybe after your exotic dance, take one of the stickers, slap it on the back of his bumper so his missus finds it when he gets home and says, what's this sticker doing on the Lips back of your car? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, give it to him. Now, Stacey, let's go back to Stacey. Do, do you think, I, I don't think bullying is bullying and it should be stopped, absolutely, but you're, you're sort of saying uh, soak it up, cop it sweet and get on no, with the, get on with the work. it depends what kind of bullying it is. But it's actually bullying, though, that's the thing. You, you know, it, maybe it's a bit of, you know, a bit of... I don't know. Well, if, if, if somebody isn't comfortable with it, then it is bullying. It if somebody is, is, okay, is distressed is about it or uncomfortable. You know, is it to the point of... Is it someone sort of saying, oh, you know, oh, chicks are this, chicks are that, or all girls are this, that, and the other, or they're talking it about... Out a they comment. went out, you know, oh, look at that girl's boobs or something. <laughs> is it that kind of thing? But she said that they no longer treat her with the same respect they did before. Yeah, but before. it's what sort of respect? Is so, it that they're talking no, about, this new oh, guy, look at that girl, look at that guy, girl, she's got big boobs, or is it more maybe. like... So you're not supposed to do that either, that's Yeah, but, I mean, is it to the point it's of that, compliment. or are they talking about... No, it's, it's not. not a compliment. <laughs> it's not. It's worth 50 grand to her if she wants to. Or is it to all they walking past and slapping on the bum? That's a bit different. the thing is, because when I tried to report it, because I didn't take... I, I didn't write everything down. I had just my word. They said you need to write it down Spot and you on. need to, you know, to defend mm. yourself. And then she doesn't have to take it further. She can just show him and say, these are all the dates that I've recorded of uh, indecent language or conversations shared with me. And if you don't stop it, I'm going to sue you. And then they'll mm. find a way to get rid of her. And no. I'm not saying, no, they I'm won't. not saying no, you don't do this or that. don't do that. I have, I have to They'll say, I, I wholeheartedly agree with, uh, with Alex and she's given some very sound advice. Keep a diary at all times, report it. If you feel uncomfortable, it is bullying and you do not have to accept it. And I'll try to keep these two ladies separated during the break. Uh, stay with us because we've got a very exciting letter on just after these few messages. Keep on dancing. And if you want to get involved in it and have us or an expert panel decide your problems in life, well, you can email us at letters at sweetandsour.net.au. Visit our website, sweetandsour.net.au. You can even get us on Facebook, facebook.com slash sweetandsour. Tweet us if you like, at Sweden Sour TV. You can even find us on Instagram now. And if we read your letter out, you'll get a ticket. And this week's movie, ticket to the movies, and this week's movie is Boy Choir. Thanks to our sponsor, Natalie O'Shea at NRC Communications. Let's move right on to letter number two. Joko Wadotto. Hello, everyone. I don't know what to, what to feel. Joko Wadodo, uh, without question, used the lives of two men now executed Australians for political expediency. He's a small bit man who needed to seem tough. What a primate. Fa frankly, I don't expect any sophisticated thinking coming out of such a backward society. And it scares me that more than 200 million of these people live in such close proximity to us. Without question, if Indonesian society doesn't progress, uh, in, in its appreciation of humanity, we face a huge threat. 
We also have some primates in our Australian Federal Police who have caused this catastrophic outcome by letting the entire nine drug smugglers leave Australia without so much as a minor intervention. It's the AFP's fault. These two boys are dead. I'm sure these Federal cops have excuses like they wanted to catch Mr Briggs or whatever they claim. But I'm also sure it's far more a question of this agency having little respect for life if it belongs to those they pre prejudge as scum. It's simply not their job to do do what it, it's simply not their job to do that whatever whether these people are drug smugglers or not. Why why is it so easy for people to forget the notion of simply doing no harm to others regardless of the mistake everyone makes? Where to from here? Uh, from Subiaco, what do you think, Alex? You say you don't know what to feel. I tell you what to feel. I feel sick hearing about this all the time because I'm really sick of it. The thing is, like, everyone knows, when you go to Indonesia, there's a sign. You get off the plane, you go through the terminal, there's a sign there, big sign with a machine gun or whatever it is, saying you do drugs and uh, the penalty is death. So we know that. The thing is, with the Australian Federal Police, they didn't have enough evidence to, to stop them before they went to Bali. That's the reason they contacted Bali to check. And they got, they got caught importing drugs. And the penalty's death. And, you know, that's it. Point taken. No more. Well, Steve, what do you, what do you think? Katrina from Subiaco WA, do you agree with her or do you think she's out of order? I think it's just a, a pretty big media thing at the moment. And friendly. everyone's... Yep all over the place with this. I'll say my bit about the AFP. I actually think that they tried to save the Australian government $300,000 so they can employ three more federal police. Back then, I think it was the 90s, if I'm correct. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, they, they could have had a thought where they thought, oh, why do we want nine drug people here in our prisons costing the Australian taxpayer uh, payer so much money? Let's dob them into Indonesia and make them pay for a while. You know, who knows what, what was going on? I mean, the Federal Police can come out, as they did a couple of weeks ago, and commented and, and covered their ground why they uh, made the phone call. But at the end of the day, I really think it's a media hype. And I think to you, don't, don't live on this. Move on. Right, Find Stacey, another story. media hype or something more? Well... First of all, I think Katrina has been very disrespectful to call the Indonesian president joke wadodo because he's obviously got a very hard job to do. It's very clear when you go to Indonesia that trafficking drugs is the death penalty. And regardless what anyone thinks and who believes who did what or who didn't do what, at the end of the day, there's no winners here because two families have lost their children and an Indonesian government has make, had to make a very hard decision which has had worldwide consequences. So there's no winners here at all. Clinton, what do you think? Look, yeah. I absolutely agree with Stace. I mean, at the end of the day, did these two lads do the wrong thing? Yes. Did they willingly do the wrong thing? Yes. My problem with it is why drag it out for 10 or 11 years? If that is your Indonesian law, kill them straight away after conviction. Don't rehabilitate them. Don't get them to help the Indonesian people. Don't get them to help themselves if the end result is going to be the same. You have to show compassion. You have to show some form of leniency. What about in America, though, when they had them in there for 25 years and then put them to the death penalty? Disgrace. 25 years. If your law is the death penalty, so be it but follow it up the minute that you are convicted of a crime. Do not rehabilitate and leave it hanging on for 10 years. That's, it's it's yeah. horrible, horrible. I have to say, Stacey, the Federal Police uh, did their jobs. Uh, I think they do a miraculous job. Obviously, we, we, we discuss a lot of uh, uh, communication with other countries across the world. Uh, it's very unfortunate what has happened. I do believe uh, Australia's plea to Indonesian government for leniency should have been upheld, uh, and that wasn't. And Australia's responded appropriately by uh, withdrawing our ambassador. Yeah, I so agree with that. Uh, I think uh, uh, it is a very, very unfortunate situation. And uh, just talking about America, I think they have more of a humane way 
um, yeah, with uh, with really the needles and what have you. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, just dying by. But by you know, rifles like Indonesia is a different country. It is, they, it is. They've got their ways. And the fun thing I think about the hypocritical part about Australia is they don't mind going over there and abusing the people over there, like you know, the sex industry and the alcohol yes. laws and everything. But then, of course, two Australians get the death penalty because they break the law and then the Australians are all like, oh, up in the air about it. Nah. See, I, I, and, and it's, I, got a, I got a break now. We've got to go have some more messages from our wonderful sponsors. But coming up next is, uh, is Alex's favourite topic, Suki Lala. Lala. We'll see you very, very shortly. Refreshing, just like sweet and sour. Welcome back straight into it, our third and final letter, Suki Lala. Hello, panelists. What the hell is wrong with my boyfriend? He was always sick, dead, and dying. But there is never really anything wrong with him. If I thought he had a medic if I thought he had medical dramas, I wouldn't be writing to you. Guys, I'd be checking him into a hospital, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with him. If he doesn't, if he doesn't want to do something, he's sick. He uses his illness as a tool, whether it's family functions, my friends, parties, work. If he's not in the mood, he's suddenly sick. Does he really hate his life that much? Is he socially scared? How can I motivate this bloke out of the medical cabinet and into the best things in life? He's quite a clever and good-hearted man, just a medical sooky la-la. Why do people become hypochondriacs? And then, what keeps them indulging in non-existent illnesses? I can't think of a single reason why, why people would choose to be sick. Life is too short to spend it in bed. Philippa, North Melbourne, Victoria and Stacey. Sooky la-la. Well, hope you won't call the mayor sooky la-la. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, absolutely I not. Oh. Well, I think that he, uh, Philippa, I think he sounds like a very selfish person because obviously his excuse is to be that he's sick when he doesn't want to do something with your friends, your family or something that he doesn't want to do. So I bet he's not sick when he wants to do something or he wants you to go somewhere with his family or his friends or go somewhere that he thinks is fun or something that he's thought of. But when, it wants, when he, he, you want him to go somewhere that you've thought of or with your family, your friends, I bet that's when he's sick. So he sounds like a very selfish man and maybe you should give him the flick. Clinton, selfish man or <clears throat> silky lala? Well, both, a silky lala and a selfish man. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have to agree with Stace. I mean, Philippa, he, 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 you said that he's always sick and reckons he's dying. Well, I reckon you play surgeon Philippa and cut out the boyfriend. <laughs> Get rid of him. <laughs> he is a loser, this guy. So uh, you sound like you, she sounds like a pretty fun-loving chick and she obviously wants to go out with her friends all the time. If he doesn't want a part of your life, move him on, move him, put him in the hospital bed, wheel him down the street. See you later. Well, Steve, now I have to ask, you do have a troll on your on your on the desk there. I thought uh, I do. Yes. Too what's... good for a Suki Lala. Yeah, I've yes. actually got a little teddy for Suki oh. Lala. <laughs> so I've got to tell Philippa, tissues. A cheap a dollar at Coles. Oh, oh sorry, I shouldn't mention are. that, but they are a dollar at Coles. Buy them ten boxes. What I suggest you could try: dress up as a naughty nurse, sneak in oh, the bedroom, yes, maybe get a little bit kinky, take a bedpan in and a thermometer, and just scare him out of bed and get him off his ass. That might work. Oh well, Alex, what, you know, what would you do in this situation? What would I do? I mean, like, I'd get rid of him, but you know, you said. Um, Life's too short to spend it in bed. Depends on what you're doing in bed. I don't think life's too short to spend in bed. I love to sleep. So, but he, to me, he sounds like what, what Stacey was saying. He sounds like um, he's got an excuse for everything. And life's too short to waste on a loser. Yes, I have to say, absolutely, I agree uh, wholeheartedly with Clinton, I think, uh, and I think he said it perfectly, cut him out of your life, move on, find somebody who wants to live life like you do. Now, guys, we need to choose a winning letter for this Number week. Number one. So, Steve, what's, uh, what's your idea? Uh, look, I'm, I'm thinking between number one and number three, but I'm going to go for number one. Number one? 
Alex. Yeah, I'm going for number one. Number one? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Stacey, what's your winning letter for this week? Oh, I think number three, because I think she needs to go to the movies oh, and take a new friend. Oops, sorry. Yep, there number, we go. Yes. number three. Oh, Whoops, yes. too many fingers. Nice. <laughs> number three, because she needs to go to the movies and take a new friend, not that Suvi Lala boyfriend. Okay, what about yourself, Clinton? Yeah, look, I'm, yeah, I, I reckon Philippa as well. If, I mean, if the sunnies don't sit here, put them, put them over your boyfriend's eyes to stop the tears, maybe. Oh, the glasses, sorry. I no, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, can I just say one thing I haven't said it is the winner uh, wins some sunglasses from Aussie uh, Opticals. Opticals. Cool. Thank you yeah. very much. Fantastic sponsor of the show. It's Thank well, you. And so we've got two <laughs> votes, I believe, for letter one. Mm. And two votes, I believe, for letter three. Well, then she can spy on prospects from behind her, her sonny's new prospects. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's interesting, you know, I, I was seriously thinking about going with letter one. I thought, uh, I thought Alex side. gave some no fantastic, no fantastic no advice. But, but, like but, but look, I, I, I have to say, I have to oh, say, I Philippa, I agree. She's down in the dumps. She has a boyfriend who won't do anything with her. She needs oh, some cheering up. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Philippa, <laughs> congratulations. We're sending you the glasses. Yeah. Now, Clint, earlier on in the show, you said you got Damn. some exciting events coming up. Well, yeah, I do have a few big MC events coming up. Um, one, which I think I'm allowed to talk about, we've got the real Dr. Patch Adams coming over to Australia. Fantastic. In October, right, yeah. and I've been put in charge of his MC gigs here in Perth. Ooh. So, um, yeah, they're going to tie that in with Telethon, and um, he's going to do a few gigs at Princess Margaret and a bit of a gala ball. So, yeah, I'll be in charge of that and might even be able to entice him onto the show, possibly. Oh, wonderful. We'll see, wait and see. Yes. Now, uh, if I could ask, Stacey, what's the best place if people want an, an investment property? What would you suggest? What areas are good for investment properties? Well, I think the western suburbs are really good. <gasps> Somewhere western That's suburbs cool. or... Or, but in my that, opinion, yeah. anywhere close to the city. Anywhere close, close to, city, to water yes. and close to the city. Close yeah, to so, transport, so the, close the to river, the city. The, yeah, the beach, wherever. Yeah, and if you're, if you're water, close to the city and close yeah. to transport, close to I think you're going to be able to lease it out. Solid sound oh, yeah. advice. Yes. Yes. In my opinion. Yes. 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 Yeah. And, and Alex, any, any art exhibitions coming up? No, I'm not doing art exhibitions anymore. I'm just going to try and concentrate on starting to paint and draw again because I like, haven't done it for a while. And if people want to get your services, how they go about it? I've got a website. Just go to my website and um, send me an email. Right, fantastic. And Steve, uh, what, uh, what show are you going to be working on next? Well, there is a rumour we're looking at a new production for this year. So we'll be um, having a meeting in the next week or two with producers and people involved. Um, we basically, with Community Tally, as you know, we survive on sponsorship. So part of our volunteering is to actually get out there amongst the people okay. and source. Ooh. Wonderful. I've just got told they're rolling the credits behind <laughs> us as we speak. So thank you, Clint, for joining us. Thank Pleasure. you, Stacey. Uh, thank, thank you, you Alex. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, John. Uh, and I'm getting the stretch along. So uh, one let's minute one minute to go, we believe. So oh, right. let's have a quick talk. What do you think? You joined up to online streaming services yet, uh, Clinton? Netflix, not yet. Not yet. Oh, what about Stacey? Well, I'm going to now. I've heard going about to? it tonight. Wonderful, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, me, Alex? Me too. I'm going to do it as Steve? well. Steve? Yes, definitely. As Netflix. if I don't watch yes, enough. Yes, that's right. We're, we're all going to the Netflix. I think yeah. we're going to hopefully be streamed online very, very shortly yeah, as well. Yes. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you had fun. Mitch is back next week and in charge. So uh, normality will continue next week or get back to normal. So Where is Mitch? Where is Mitch? Mitch? Exactly. Is he at the, the Logies? Logies? Is Mitch at the Logies? Uh, he's gone to the Logies and he's left us here hosting the show on our own. I think we done a wonderful job, everybody. I think we have. Fantastic. We'll I, I, yeah, I think, I think we should be nominated for a Logie ourselves. Yes. Look at this. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Bye. We're out of here. Bye. Goodbye, Australia.